Welcome to this, my second video tutorial, fun with photo mask frames, using Serif's Craft Artist Professional software. An accompanying PDF transcript, with all the links and any other information, is available for download on my blog, karenscraftingnook.blogspot.com. Try as I might, I couldn't fit all the information onto one 15 minute segment unless I rushed through it all. So there are actually two parts to this tutorial. This tutorial was born out of a recent thread posted on Daisy Trail, the Daisy Trail forum by White Rabbit called Photo Masks, which referred to a video uh, on YouTube, Convert Photo Masks to Frames, by another Daisy Trail member, McLean Sue, although she no longer seems active on the uh, forum. As the thread progressed, splodges and splats as bases for your frames were mentioned, and there was a link to another DT forum thread, with a link there to quick shape splats previously found in Serif's Draw Plus 7 software, which could be downloaded to add to the stencils tab in Craft Artist. Before I start, I would like to take the opportunity to thank all the following on the Data Trail Forum for their input. White Rabbit for starting the thread in the first place, and thus getting me interested in the use of photo masks. McLean Sue for her video tutorial, which explained the basics of how to get started. Alfred, who's corniest on DT, for the links to the quick shapes and his recipe to produce an artistic edge which is softer than the original way of doing things and also for allowing me to show it here. Janine S for her version of how she does this and her agreement to letting me show it here. And to Wendy P for her idea of using dingbats to add character to a plain frame. I can't take credit for any of the following. I am merely building on the information the aforementioned have given out. Personally, I find that making up the little tutorials and writing them down helps to fix the, fix the details in my brain, and I'm hoping that sharing with others will be helpful to them too. So having added the DP7 shapes to my stencils tab, it was time to play. I started with a straightforward splat stencil, so I'm going to go up to stencils, find the splat. and choose one. We'll use this one. Bring the stencil onto the workplace, go up to shapes, click on quick rectangle, draw a rectangle, we'll colour that black, we will select, click on the stencil and lift the stencil and that gives us our basic shape. What we do now is select that shape and I'm going to do Control C to copy it and then we go up to edit on the toolbar and click on paste to special. Here we click on serif transparent bitmap and we OK it. We get this grey box and if we pull that out we have our copy. So we'll get rid of this original one and we've got this one to play with. Because we've done that paste to special on the context toolbar we now have this convert to frame appear so we click that and this has turned this into a frame and we can check that by bringing a photograph in and there we have it nice working frame now it looks quite nice like that but what we can do as well on this is select it right click to bring the filter effects up and we can add some filter effects. Just a plain bevel and emboss. It's just emboss. And you can see already there's a bit of an embossed edge appearing. We'll just accentuate that slightly. And do that. Okay. And now you've got quite an interesting little framed image. Make quite a nice embellishment in fact. So what we could do if we want to keep that is open the embellishments tab, pop it in. And there we go. Now I'm going to take, going to right click this again, take the effect off it, and click on the little box there and on the delete key get rid of the photo and we have our frame. And we're going to store this now in the frames tab, park it in there and there it is. And you can see it still works okay, bring it out, quick photo, voila. So that was the first one done. 
That was when I then remembered Wendy P's tutorial where you could use dingbats. So I go back to stencils, bring it out again. As before, go up to shapes, rectangle, draw it, colour it, select, select the stencil, lift your stencil. There's our shape again. Now we're going to uh, add a little character with some dingbats. Now, I did that with this page here, and you can see that you've got little dingbats attached to the frame. And the way we do that is to find some dingbats that you like. And the ones I used for that page were dingbats called Floralia by Manfred Klein, and I got those from fontsquirrel.com. I also happen to remember uh, which ones I use, so that makes life easier. So to bring your dingbats in, click on text, click onto the page, make it bigger so we can see what we're doing. Go to the font box, just like any other, and work your way down. When it decides it's going to come down, there we go. And there's the Floralia. Click on that. And I know that the one I used was a lowercase v. And it looks like that's a mess, but I think I know what's happened there. If you ever get that, go to line. And you can see I've got that set far too high. I wasn't playing around earlier. Take that back to zero. And we're back in play. That's one. And the second thing that I had about Floralia and that was a capital B for Bravo. Select it and now we can make these the size you want them to be and we can just attach them onto the frame, pop them in control, left click and we can then get exact copies of what we've got. Obviously when you're doing this you would take more time about spacing and be a bit more artsy fartsy about it. And when you're happy with it, I'll just zoom out a little bit and we're now going to draw a box around everything group it, it's always one. And then I like to go up to tools, convert to bitmap, click OK. And that's now become a bitmap to play with. And now we do exactly the same as we did before. So Control C to copy it, up to edit, paste special, serif transparent bitmap, OK. Paste our bitmap get rid of the original and now we go back to convert to frame and there's our frame and again you can check it's bringing in an image and once again you can put effects on there if you want to the choice is yours You can also do this kind of effect uh, with Photoshop brushes if you have the ABR viewer to change them into the PNGs that you just bring in via the photo tab just like any other image. So this gives quite a nice result and uh, I was wondering though if it was possible to get a softer edge to the frame and this is where Alfred's recipe came in to get that softer edge. And this is what we're hoping to get, these softer edges, decorative edges to the frame. So, we go back to our stencils tab, try something different this time, we'll bring this one in. Now what we do here is we press this outer button to leave the shape like that go up to our shapes, click on the rectangle again, pop the rectangle over, change the colour of that to black, select 
and now we click on the stencil and we lift the stencil and this leaves us with a cropped item. Now then, to soften the edges of this cropped item, this is going to be our, our mask, what we do is we, put a, we can put a feather edge onto it and you find the feather edge under effects, if you go down to the bottom you've got material depth here and you've got feather edge here helps if you select it <laughs> and now we can let that softer you can see you've got that soft effect there other ways you can do this we click that on and take the feather edge off another way you can do it is to go to your brushes and I'm already in the edges brushes and you can put a glow on which is very similar to the feather edge or you could use one of the uh, decorative edges which you may or may not like but I'm going to for the time being stick with with the glow so we will go back up to line take that off back to effects back to the feather edge and we'll just pop that on quite happy with that so what we now do is open up our frames tab on the left here and we drop that in wait for it to do the business there it is we can delete that one drag this one back onto the page and if we go to the layers tab here we're on layer one here's our frame and there's a little plus sign here which we click and we now have a bitmap and the poly curve so you click on the bitmap to select that we go back up to colour because this allows us to access the blend mode which is here and it's set to normal at the moment but we are going to click on that and set that to erase and that gives us this grey section here and if we bring the photo on we find that that has taken quite nicely and I think, if I remember correctly you can even put the effect on that as well if you wanted to you just play with it uh, so we'll just take the effect off ok again I should click on there delete the photo open our frames tab pop that into the frames and we can get rid of that one now as I say this is the sort of result you can get that's using one of the um, uh, decorative edges in the edge area there that was using the feather defect I think and that again was using one of the decorative edges so really you can just play around this is the frame that I made using um, the dingbats and having saved it in the frames panel and again you could use, that was a soft edged one that was just using simple, one of the simple splats again if you get a bit funny put an edge on the leaf there just need to be careful which kind of photo you put into that but there you go, quite nice and then sometimes you get a little bit silly I like cats. You can put a pussy cat there. <laughs> so that's part one of this tutorial. So if you'd like to join me in part two, I'll see you there.